We're going to go over some of the features of the Watershot for iPhone app. We'll start by showing you how to set up your settings so that everything works properly with the app. So the first thing you do is once you get your phone unlocked and go to your settings and go to privacy. And within privacy, once the app is loaded on your phone, you want to make sure that the following are turned on for the Watershot app. First is location services, so click on location services. Go down to find the Watershot app and make sure it's green then hit privacy to go back, click on photos, see the Watershot app, make sure it's green under photos, and then under microphone, do the same thing, click on microphone, find the Watershot app, and make sure it's green. What this does is allows the photos and videos that you record with your Watershot for iPhone app to save to your photo album on your phone. The next thing you want to do is you want to turn your auto lock to never. What this does is make sure that your app does not go into lock mode while you're using the housing because once it locks you cannot unlock it inside the housing because you cannot swipe once the phone is in the housing. So once you're in settings, click on general, scroll down to where it says auto lock, you'll see options one, two, three, four, five minutes and never. You want to click on never and now it is set up. So if you've loaded the app onto your phone, if you've downloaded it from the app store, it's free, it will show up on one of your screens uh, on your phone and then what you want to do is you want to place it in this bottom corner and the way you do that is you hold down on any app and you'll notice the apps start to shake and there's some X's next to them they're shaking once they're shaking you're able to drag the apps into different positions so you want to create a space on the bottom row and then drag the Watershot app to that location then you hit your home button to lock the apps in place. Now your app is in a location so that if the app crashes or closes while it's in the housing, you'll be able to reopen it using the buttons on the housing. So first of all, I'll go through, we'll open the app. When it opens, it will open in standard camera mode. Within standard camera mode, you'll notice there's basically four main icons. These line up with the four main buttons on your housing, one, two, three, four. So now we'll talk through what each of those buttons do. The first button is the center button, and this center button is your shutter button. So when you tap this button, it takes a photo, so I'll show that. So you tap the button, takes a photo, you'll see it says saving photo. Note that each button has a tap and a hold function. So a short press does one function, and a long press where you press and hold does another function. So the tap function on the center button is the shutter button. The hold function on the center button, you'll see here if I hold down the center button for a couple seconds, it puts the app to sleep. So you'll notice here it says tap any button to wake up. So sleep mode helps save battery on the phone. Tap here to wake it back up. So now you're back in camera mode. The second button is this top button here where you see a, a camera and a video camera icon. A tap function on this button changes between photo and video mode. So right now we're in photo mode, which you can see over here where you see the camera shown and it will the word single shot. If I tap this button here, it'll change to video mode. Now you'll see it's changed to a video camera and it says video. You'll also notice that the center button now has changed to a red dot which indicates that it will start recording when you press the button. So now a tap function on the center button starts the recording. You'll see a timer display here. You hit the center button again to stop the video and you'll see the app saying it's saving the video. Then all you do is tap this top button again to change back into photo or photo mode which is single shot mode. Okay the fourth button here which you see a big lock symbol the point of this button is when you press it, you'll notice that a lock symbol appears here, which means the lock is on. This is focus lock. So when this is on, the phone will not autofocus. When it's off, when there's no icon, the phone continues to autofocus as it normally would. The intention of this is if you want to focus on an object that's a certain distance away and stay at that focus point, even if something else comes within the image, you put the focus lock on, that way the phone will not autofocus. So that's how you use that button. The bottom button where you see the play symbol, a tap function here takes you out of camera mode and into playback mode. So if you tap this, we go into playback mode. This is where you'll see the photos and videos that you've taken. And then you'll see some arrows here. You'll use these arrows to scroll through the pictures you've taken or the videos you've taken. And then you hit the bottom button tap it to go back into camera mode. But we'll go back into playback mode again here by pressing the bottom button. And this bottom button here you'll see has two icons, which means two modes. So as we said, tap goes back into camera mode. If you hold this button down, you now see the options to post to Facebook or Twitter. So by opening this, you now have the option to post this video or the photo you've selected to Facebook or Twitter. And you use the arrows here to scroll down and select which one, either post to Facebook or Twitter. And then you hit tap the bottom button to post it, or if you want to exit out without posting, hold the button down and it will exit the menu. Now we'll tap this bottom button again 
to go back into the camera mode. Here within the camera mode, you'll see that there's a gear icon here, which stands for settings. And if you hold down the bottom button, you will open up a variety of other options, which are settings that you can adjust while the phone is in your housing. And you use these arrow keys to move the water shot icon to the different options. Once you're on the option you want to select, you hit the bottom button, tap it, and it'll open up the sub menu there. So here you can see you can change from single shot to burst mode. If you have the advanced license, you can do the camera timers, color filters, or auto white balance. You'll notice this phone does not have the advanced features. So when I scroll down and hit camera timers and hit the select button, it says camera license required and that you must purchase the advanced camera license, which we will show you how to do later. But one of the options you can do is go into burst mode. So now you'll see we've selected burst and changed modes. Go back into the menu by holding down the bottom button. It's worthwhile to spend some time here looking at these different options and seeing how they change the setup of your app to make sure it's set up the way you want when the phone is in your housing. Hold the bottom button to exit out of the menu. The other thing to note is before you put the phone in the housing, there are all an additional set of settings that you can set up prior to putting the phone in the housing. These settings are here under the water shot logo. So if you open the app and you're in camera mode, select the water shot logo and it'll bring up a menu. This menu has a lot of different options including a tutorial that you can you, you can read. Uh, it has some information here about the, the app and the version of the app and which versions of iOS it works with. It has a variety of settings under action camera settings. You can see here there's camera timer, zoom settings, photo saving, front and rear camera, display bar. There's a variety of options here. They allow you to customize the app to your needs. For instance here like we talked about when you go into burst mode, it takes multiple pictures every time you hit the shutter. Here you can determine how many pictures it takes in that burst mode. It can either take two pictures every time you push the button, three, four, five, up to ten pictures every time you press the shutter button in burst mode. That's one thing you can change. You can set a max recording time, which prevents you from accidentally recording a really long video. You can set the time before the app goes to sleep for inactivity. And then there's some advanced features here. Uh, if you're doing, if you bought the advanced app and you want to do a self timer, an interval timer, and a number of interval images. There's also a couple options in saving photos. You can have the app automatically save the photos or by clicking over here onto manual, you can change it to manual, which means every time you take a photo, the app will ask you if you want to save the photo instead of automatically saving the photo. If you want your display bar to be larger, uh, so you can read it more clearly. You can change it off of standard and click on large. And now you'll notice if we go back here to the app that the display here in the corner is much larger so you can read it more clearly if you want it that way. But it covers more of the screen so we give you both options to make that decision. Um, there's a variety of other things in here. Uh, there's a few versions of sleep mode. You can determine whether it saves your GPS location or not within the pictures. There's uh, activity mode, we have a diving and a surfing mode. The diving mode adds some additional features to the app. The surfing mode is a little bit simpler in the app. Uh, there are, here is where you buy the advanced licenses. We have an advanced scuba license which helps you do dive logging. Uh, we have an advanced camera license which adds some more advanced camera features like zoom, camera timers, etc. So if you want to buy a license, click on licenses. You go to camera licenses and then you can see here this screen will pop up where it says buy advanced camera license. You click on this and then it will take you into your iTunes, ask for your iTunes password, it will charge you $1.99 and typically within about 24 to 48 hours the advanced features will show up on your phone. There is also a scuba license. There's a, there's a couple version of the scuba license available. These are, they allow you to do dive analyzers and dive logs on your phone and there's some more information, other videos online about how to use those advanced features uh, on the app. These are also available to buy through iTunes, just like the camera advanced license is available. So it's an in-app purchase. Services here. Services, this is where you set up the link of the Watershot app to your social media account. So you can link it to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and then DivePal is a dive logging site. So if you, once you download the app, if you go into here and click on this icon, it will open up your Facebook account or your Twitter account or your YouTube account and make sure that they are linked together. You want to do this, and you can see here, once it's set up, it will say Facebook account is successfully set up. Once this is done, you'll be able to post directly from our app onto Facebook. So once again, once you first get the app downloaded, it's worthwhile to click on this Watershot icon, go through these different menus, and set up the app in the way that works best for you.
Okay, real quickly, we'll go over the Watershot for Android app. It's very similar to the Watershot for iPhone app. Most of the functions are identical, but we want to show up some of the setup features to make sure that you know the differences. So you'll see we already have the Watershot app installed and placed in the corner here of the home screen on the Samsung. You can see it here. One of the key things you want to do when you first load the app onto the phone is to turn the lock screen off. So you do this by going into the settings on the phone and then you scroll down here to lock screen and you'll see here lock screen you can set it to swipe, motion, face lock, face and voice, pattern, pin, or none. We want to set up none for the screen lock. What this allows you to do is allows the phone to be in normal sleep mode so it'll go to sleep to save battery and then to wake it up all you have to do is hit the home button. And since on our housing illustrated here we have a home button you'll be able to wake the phone up here. The other four buttons here are for touch screen access, which are within our app. So click on the Watershot icon to open the app. Once it's open here, you'll notice the four button locations. So these are lined up with the four buttons on the housing. They are the same buttons, same functions, same setup as on the Watershot for iPhone app. So real quick, we'll go over how to purchase the advanced camera license and what the advanced camera license gets you in the Watershot for iPhone app. So real quick, your Watershot app is on your phone, click on it to open it. Once it's open, you want to hit this Watershot icon down here in the corner. This opens up a background menu. You'll notice that one of the options here is licenses. Click on licenses and you'll see here scuba licenses, camera licenses. These are the advanced licenses that require purchase. So right now we'll talk about the camera license. If you click on camera license, you'll see here where you have the option. Before you purchase it, it will say basic here on a camera license level. Once you purchase the advanced, it will say advanced. If you haven't purchased it yet, you can click this blue icon here below that says buy advanced license for $199. Once you click on that, it will take you to your iTunes, ask for your iTunes password, and you will make an in-app purchase. The in-app purchase takes somewhere between 24 and 48 hours to show up on your phone. So once you've made the purchase, wait for one to two days, and then the advanced features should show up on your phone. Once you've made the purchase, now you can go back, click back into the normal camera mode here. So now in the normal camera mode, some advanced features are available. One of the first advanced features that's available is zoom. The zoom function is accessible by holding down this top button here. You'll see there's a plus and minus symbol there. That represents zoom, and it's accessed by holding down. So if you touch and hold the top icon for a few seconds, you'll notice that a zoom bar appears and you'll notice that the icons here under the buttons have changed. To change the zoom level, you hit the top button to zoom in. So you'll see here, I'm, as I'm hitting plus, the zoom level is changing. And you hit the bottom button to zoom out. Once you're at the zoom level that you want, you hit the center button to take the photo. So there, it took a photo, says saving photo. To exit out of the zoom function, zoom back to the level that you want to exit with, and then hold down the bottom button to exit zoom. Now you're back into the normal camera mode. The other advanced features that are available are available by holding down the bottom button which gets you into settings. Hold down the bottom button. Now you open up the menus and you can see here if you go down to photo options by using the arrow and then hit the check mark to select photo options there are three features here at the bottom. Camera timers, ca color filters, and auto white balance. These are advanced features. If you go down to camera timers click the check mark, you'll see self timer and interval timer. These are two timer options that are part of the advanced features. So let's say we do self timer and hit the button. Now it will say it has five seconds before it takes a picture. So click OK. So now it's on self timer. So now if I hit the, sh the shutter button in the center, it counts down and it won't take the picture until it gets to zero. Then it takes the picture. So now you can see we're in self-timer mode. So in order to get out of self-timer mode, hold down the bottom button to open the menu, go to photo options, and now you can go back either into burst mode or single shot mode. So we'll go here and select single shot. Now you see we've changed to single shot mode. Now let's show you some of the other features here. So photo options, camera timers. I showed you the self-timer. If you go to interval timer, what it does is it lets you select the delay how long in between each image, and then how many total images you take. So you go through here and you can select that. So let's select delay, so six second delay, interval timer. Now it says, you can see the countdown and the number of pictures. So it's counting down from six to zero, it'll take one picture, then it counts down again to take the next picture. So this is the interval timer.
it continues to go until you end the interval timer section. Or if you hold down the bottom button, open up the menu, go to photo options, and go back to single shot, you can turn that off. If you want to adjust your timers, so if you want longer than 10 seconds in between, or longer than 6 seconds in between, and more than 10 shots or less than 10 shots, you hit the water shot icon, go in here into advanced camera settings, camera timers, and you'll see here interval timer delay, interval timer images, and self timer. So here you can see when you select them, you can change the timing in between. So here's where you would change those settings so that when you go into interval timer mode or self timer mode, it has the correct settings that you want. Here are some of the more advanced features. If you hold this down, go to photo options, go to color filters. So sometimes when you're underwater, the images are tinted based on the blue water, so you want to apply color filters. These are electronic filters. They tint your image red, magenta, or yellow. You need to be careful when using these. Sometimes if you're not in the right settings, the images end up too red. Uh, it adds too much color. We're continuing to use these features and trying to advance them to make them as functional as possible. At this point, they're not as good as the mechanical color filters, but we're working to advance them because we think that eventually you can just use electronic color correction. But to turn them on, you just select it, and now it's in red mode. So every time you take a picture, it will red tint your image. So I'll go back here to photo options, go down to color filters, select, and we'll go back to none to turn them off. Okay, and the last one is auto white balance. This helps correct the coloring of your image based on the light uh, available. So if you, you can turn this on, enable or disable, it helps your images look a little bit clearer. It's worthwhile playing with this, taking some images with it and some without and deciding if you like it enabled or disabled. And all you do is just scroll down to select either enabled or disabled and hit the check mark to select. Those are the advanced features in the advanced camera license. We're always looking to add new features. We will continuously be updating the advanced license, and so if you renew your license, there will likely be new features added to the advanced camera license.